Good afternoon guys, my name is David and you're watching Vival Automotive. So a few months ago I made a video about who are the owners of the most expensive car ever made, the Ferrari 250 GDO. And today I thought it would be a good idea to continue this series with one of the other uh, automotive greats, the McLaren F1 and its owners. Before we start the video, just a quick disclaimer. Uh, the owners mentioned in this video may have already sold their McLaren F1, but at one point or another they owned the car. And as always, before we start the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and give the video a thumbs up to help me out. Anyway, the McLaren F1 came out in 1992 and has a 6.1 liter BMW V12 engine, which produces 618 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. And this engine is also capable of springing the car from 0 to 60 miles an hour in just 3.2 seconds, which is an insane figure even today, let alone back in 1992. But insane figures are sort of a theme with the McLaren F1, as it was the fastest car in the world for 12 straight years after it hit 240 miles an hour two-way average speed. It also still holds the title for the world's fastest naturally aspirated title almost 30 years after it was produced. And apart from all the great stats and figures, the car has got everything a great car collector would want from a vehicle. It has got a timeless design, great racing history, butterfly doors, it is very rare, and to top it all off, it has got a three seat layout. Honestly, can you name a cooler car feature than having three seats? Because I cannot. To be honest, I didn't really enjoy the McLaren F1 for a long time because it was just a car that was old when I was growing up and enjoying cars. But when you just look at all these things that I named before, you know, the rarity, the specs and everything, there's just no way you cannot love this car. But now let's stop with this whole introduction of the car because there's quite a big chance that you already knew what the McLaren F1 was before watching this video and instead let's focus on the owners. Some cars will go to collections I'm sure but um, quite a high percentage of people are going to drive it. Some people from the music industry, some people from um, people that collect classic cars for instance. What we were trying to make really was a modern classic. So the first car on today's list, chassis number 015, finished in jet black with black leather, belongs to the American host, TV producer, actor and uh, comedian Jay Leno. Leno started his career way back when as a stand-up comedian, but he is most well known for his stint as the host of The Late Night Show from 1992 all the way to 2014, I believe. And while hosting the show, he had to make quite some cash because he is the owner of quite a large and eclectic car collection, which includes cars such as the McLaren P1, the 2015 BAC Mono, the 1909 Baker Electric, or 1928 Bugatti Type 37A, a pair of Ford GTs, and more. In fact, his collection is so extensive that he based an entire new show off of it, which is called Jay Leno's Garage, and it has been airing since 2014. It must be great to make money and do what you love while talking about your extensive car collection and the cars you purchased in the past. Next car on the list is a chassis 061, which is a burgundy exterior, tan interior and red Alcantara inserts, and belongs to the famous British actor and comedian Rowan Atkinson. Atkinson is most well known for his comedic character of Mr. Bean. However, similar to Leno, he is also an avid car collector. His car collection is however even more eclectic and I would say weird than Leno's is and includes cars such as the Honda NSX, the Audi R8, Aston Martin V8 Vantage or the Honda Civic Hybrid and Skoda Superb. He also drove his McLaren F1 for 40,000 miles which is an absolutely incredible number for a car of this value and rarity and managed to crash it twice while doing it. Previously I've made a video about the six most expensive car crashes in the world and without giving you any spoilers, <coughs> this car just may have been on the list. Anyhow, even after putting 40,000 miles on the clock and crashing the car twice, Rowan Atkinson was able to sell the car for $8 million to Faisal bin Laden back in 2015. Next car, chassis number 067, finished in magnesium, silver and black leather, belonged to the famous tech entrepreneur Elon Musk. Nowadays, Elon Musk is all over the media, whether it is because of his car company Tesla, which is the most valuable car company in the world right now, absolutely crazy in my opinion, his rocket space science stuff company SpaceX, his futuristic tunnel and not a flamethrower boring company, his sometimes not so smart tweets, or his legendary appearance on the Joe Rogan podcast where he smoked weed and this legendary picture came out of it. 
but back in the day he wasn't as big of a figure in the media. Back in 1999 he sold his internet startup Zip2 for more than 300 million dollars and what else could you do with so much money than buy the fastest car in the world and found a company which later becomes PayPal and makes you even more money for even more cars. Receiving cash is cash. I mean those are just a large number of Ben Franklins. It's a perfect car for Silicon Valley, it really is. There is, gentlemen, the fastest car in the world. Elon Musk owned the car for quite a few years and uh, used it as a daily driver for his commutes across California. But the most entertaining story was when he crashed the car uh, when it was brand new. So the story goes that Elon Musk bought the car and then drove it with Peter Thiel as his co-driver. And as you do, Peter Thiel asked him, you know, so what can this car do? So Musk stepped on the gas, the car took off, then crashed into the side of the road and was almost totaled. And to top it all off, because the car was brand new, it was yet to be insured. But you know, thankfully, Musk had enough of spare change to repair the car and then use it as it was intended. Car chassis number 44 has virtually the exact same spec as Elon Musk's McLaren F1 and it was allegedly recently acquired by the F1 world champion Lewis Hamilton. So in case you've never heard about Lewis Hamilton, he's a Formula 1 driver who won 6 driver championship titles and based on this statistic is the second most successful Formula 1 driver in the history being topped off only by Michael Schumacher with 7 title wins. Hamilton has been driving for the Mercedes AMG Petronas F1 team since 2013, however outside the track he for sure does not only drive Ben's cars. Among other cars, he owns a McLaren P1, a Ferrari LaFerrari, Mercedes SLS Black Series, or a custom Pagani Zonda 760 LH, with the LH standing for, you guessed it, Lewis Hamilton. Okay, I have to admit, I don't know all that much about Sultan of Brunei, apart from the fact that he has a huge car collection. And when I say huge, I mean like a massive car collection, perhaps the biggest car collection in the world. And this car collection contains, for example, four Bugatti EB110s, four Ferrari 288 GTOs, 10 Ferrari F40s, 8 Ferrari F50s, 12 Porsche 959s, and 16 Jaguar XJ220s, and more. And a car collection of this scale belonging to a Sultan with pretty much infinite amount of money, of course, has to have some McLaren F1s in it. And so the Sultan of Brunei, being the humble guy he is, ordered not one or two or three or four, he ordered five road-going versions of the McLaren F1. And that's five out of 64 road-going versions of the car ever made. There is not much information about these cars on the internet because they have been stationary for their entire lives, just locked up in dark garages somewhere in the middle of a desert. So I'm only going to state the chassis number and the specs of the cars he owned or owns. So chassis number four uh, is finished in Grand Prix Red with a black leather interior. Chassis number five is finished in Jet Black with black leather interior. Chassis number 014 was finished in Dandelion Yellow uh, with black leather interior. However, a new owner bought the car and repainted it white and put a high downforce kit onto the car. Chassis number 008 is finished in cobalt blue and chassis number 002 is finished in Dorchester grey with black and grey leather interior. And if you thought that this was all the McLaren F1s the Sultan of Brunei owns, no, there's, there's still more. There, there's more to cover here. So apart from the five road-going versions, the Sultan of Brunei also owns three out of six McLaren F1 LMs ever made, the LM1, LM4 and LM5 and also a 1 out of 3 ever made McLaren F1 GT and a McLaren F1 GTR finished in the special UNO racing livery. But that's enough of that, let's move to the more casual supercar owners who don't need more than one McLaren F1 in their collection. The car number 25 finished in a very special dark purple pearl belonged to a famous UK songwriter and artist uh, George Harrison who got most famous for his role as the lead guitarist in the band Beatles. You know the Beatles, that small little British rock band that no one ever really heard of. Yeah, that band. Harrison was an avid motor racing fan and even attended the 1955 British GP while he was only 12 years old. 
Throughout his life, he continued watching motorsports, and during the 1977 Formula One season, he even took a break from, you know, the casual music making, and instead traveled the world, watching pretty much every race on the Formula One calendar. During this year, he befriended F1 drivers like Niki Lauda, Emerson Fittipaldi, or Jackie Stewart, wrote a song about F1 motor racing titled Faster, and made a video clip for the song in which he is sitting in the back of a cab while being chauffeured around by the three-time world champion Stewart. Wow, that was quite a detour, but now let's go back to Harrison's F1. His car was super unique because on the chassis and the steel frame of the car were quotes from the Beatles songs handwritten by the car's designer Gordon Murray. Talking about Gordon Murray, he is also one of the owners of the F1, and more specifically the experimental prototype number 3, which was given to him at the end of the McLaren F1 project by McLaren Automotive. I've always wanted to make the ultimate sports car, always, and um, I never really thought I'd get the opportunity to do it this well. Apart from working on the development of the McLaren F1, Murray has also worked on a bunch of F1 cars for Brabham, as well as the most dominant F1 car ever, the McLaren uh, MP4-4 from the 1988 season. And moving on from the experimental prototype number 3 to the prototype number 5, finished in dark green metallic with a grey interior, this car was used by McLaren to set the speed record in 1998. It was driven by Andy Wallace and set the two-way average speed of 240 miles an hour or 386 kilometers per hour and is owned by McLaren Automotive to this day. This is the only car on this list which I have seen personally when I was at the McLaren Technology Center last fall and so if you haven't seen that video, click over here and go watch it. And lastly, there is the chassis 062 which was owned by the American tech entrepreneur and CTO of Oracle Larry Ellison. Oracle is an American corporation which specializes in database software and technology and has over 140,000 employees worldwide. Ellison, who is worth $66 billion, is the richest person on this list, is the sixth richest person in the world, owns the 12th largest yacht in the world, which he named Rising Sun, has far too many homes and real estate, an island, and a few military jets. As you do when you're a billionaire. He could well be the antagonist in a James Bond movie. Ellison sold his McLaren F1 back in 2010 for $3.6 million, but you know, if he missed the car and wanted to buy it back for a current market price of $15 million, he could buy 4,400 McLaren F1s before he ran out of money. That's of course if there were physically 4,400 McLaren F1s driving around, which there are not. There's only 106 of these cars. And that's everything for today's video. Thank you very much for sticking here until the end. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more automotive content every week. In the comments below, let me know which one of the cars on today's list was your favorite, which one of the people on today's list was your favorite. And as always, hopefully, see you next time.